Hello, welcome to Ask Serena Live. Happy Thursday. Hey, Kimberly. Happy, happy Thursday. What a week. What a long week. What a long day. Hey. Hello. So I wonder, and you guys can tell me, hello, Dom B. Tillman. Thank you for joining. I wonder if you guys see me clearer. I got a new phone today. I actually chucked my S5 and I now am the owner of an S6. And to me, I feel like the picture quality is amazing, really, really clear. So I'm really excited about it. That's a little bit about what my day was like. Other than that, the day was crazy. I think the highlight of the day was my new phone. Everything else was just a little bit off. I was just talking about this on Snapchat. You ever have like one of those days where it just feels like a little off and you don't really even know why it's off? It was that kind of day. So I'm happy to be here and kicking it with you guys. And tonight we're going to talk about discomfort of all things and or getting comfortable with discomfort. But before I do that, let me introduce myself. So I am Janine Truitt. I am the Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations LLC. I am based in New York in case you haven't been able to figure that out with my accent <laughs> that everybody seems to remind me of. Um, but Talent Think Innovations is a business strategy firm. So what I focus on is strategy for small to mid-sized businesses in the realm of HR and talent management. I also help businesses with digital branding and digital media strategy. And I'm also an overall strategy advisor for tech firms and startups. So that's a little bit about me. Um, other than that, you can also find me at the Aristocracy of HR. I have to say that, and I'll say a little bit more about that later, but that is my blog. That's my baby. And I'll share with you what I'm up to on the aristocracy of HR.com a little later in the show. So let me hop into it. Today, I am talking about discomfort. You're probably like, discomfort? What do you mean? So here's the background. In 2014, yes. So it was 2014 when I left my full-time job to go full-time into my business. Prior to that, I had been working full-time and managing my business. So it was like having two full-time jobs, if you can imagine that. Kind of crazy, but that's the way I chose to do it. I just couldn't go cold turkey. I needed to figure out how this thing was going to work before I left my gainfully um, I guess, employed position in the National Laboratory System. So in any event, I write for a um, platform called Performance I Create. And so at that time, it was probably about the end of the year. We usually wrap up the year when we talk about like lessons learned and things like that. And basically that year, <laughs> while I think I was... I always seem to think I'm writing something to help somebody else. And I'm pretty sure that that was, that was both the intention and I'm sure that's how it was received. In hindsight, I'm pretty certain that I wrote this piece called, um, you know, discomfort in 2015, getting more discomfort in 2015. Pretty certain that that was meant to be for me. Um, I think I was helping myself somewhat. And so, you know, what I wanted to get across to people is that there's a certain level of discomfort that's needed to achieve greatness. And I think at that time, I was still kind of going through the process. Like I was still kind of getting used to this idea of being in a state of discomfort. And what do I mean by that? I'm a very, very linear person, extremely linear. Hey, Chimay. Hey, boo. Um, I'm a very linear person, or at least I have been. And so everything I've done in my life has been on a one track road. Like it's 
been this is what you do you do that and that alone and so you know I did everything that hey girl um I did everything that I felt my family wanted me to do right so I went to school I got my education got that under my belt shortly thereafter I did an internship I've worked since I was 14 um you know I, I basically PIC. <laughs> um, you know, so I, I did all of that. Like everything that they tell you you're supposed to do, I did. Went to school, got the degree, got the job, picked a career, um, and did that. And I guess what I found in time is that um, although all of that was great, I think I was comfortable. I think I got really, really comfortable. I think I got too comfortable. Comfortable to the point where I wasn't any longer pushing myself. Like I was not, even if I thought I was pushing myself on the job, I wasn't pushing myself enough out of my comfort zone, let's just say. And I think the only way that I came to recognize that um, there was more for me to do than what I thought I was doing was my involvement in social media and blogging. And so around this 2013, 2014 year, it was kind of a key year for me because there were crazy things going on like in government and I worked for a government entity. I worked for a federal contractor. And so there was a moment in time in which I didn't know whether I was gonna have a job or not. And not having a job meant like, I probably wasn't going to be able to pay my mortgage and on and on and on. You can kind of get where I'm going with this. So that was happening. But at the same time, I was getting opportunities on the job somewhat. But then like the blogging was taking off and people were starting to like check for me. And it was like, who's this Janine Truitt? And and so opportunities started happening there. And I started meeting people and I had kind of had some mentors who identified me and took an interest in me. And so it was a really weird time. Like I just remember like every day, I just felt like I had a knot in my stomach. Like because things just weren't linear. They weren't what I was used to. And so anyway, I ended up going into the business and I had a lot of different people just telling me like, look, you have done your time. I know you think you want to wait this thing out and see if you're going to like rise the ranks, but I have to tell you that's not what you're going to do. Hey, Lataria. And I was like, well, what do you mean? Because at this point, I've started this business as a part time thing. I'm thinking business plan wise, I'm going to just see this thing out like 10 years. And then when my husband retires, I'm going to just go into the business. I had this thing planned. And so the idea that people were telling me like, you probably are supposed to make this business now and you're probably supposed to work in this business. And by the way, you're not really a fit for the job that you're doing. Like you've kind of outgrown that job. And so it was a very, it's very unsettling to hear those kind of things when you're me, when you're the kind of person that plans their life almost to a fault. And that is who I, I'm being so honest right now. Like that's who I am. I plan and I plan and I plan. And so, you know, I had some decisions to make and luckily enough, I think life circumstances at that time pushed me in a way where it was almost inevitable. I had no choice really whatsoever, but to make the decision to go into my business. I had my son, my third child, and went back to work to a project that I created that was pretty much going to shit. It was going to shit. And then what else happened? Oh, daycare, on-site daycare was going up like 30%. So like any possible raise that I would have gotten that year would have gone back to daycare and so it was just like all of these things and then like my husband was going through stuff at his job and it all just made sense that i needed to make this decision and and by the way the two years i spent building this part-time business i was already functional 
Like, whereas my plan said like 10 years, I was already functional a year and a half in. So I'm rocking and rolling, but then there's all this turmoil. Discomfort. When I tell you it's the most uncomfortable I have been in my life, inclusive of pregnant, like that's a certain type of discomfort. This was bloody discomfort, like just uncomfortable. And um, I went through it. And like I said, the article I wrote for performance I create, I believed at the time I wrote it for other people. But in hindsight, I do realize now that I was trying to help myself. I think I was trying to talk out the discomfort that I was going through. Um, and I guess in some regard it was cathartic, but it took, literally took me the whole of 2015 to get, um, I guess comfortable with this idea of discomfort. So it wasn't at the point that I wrote this article in 2014 that I was ever comfortable with that concept, which is interesting because if you read the article and I hope you do, um, it would seem, it would appear that I'm very comfortable with the concept. I guess I understood it, but I hadn't embraced it because discomfort is discomfort. You're uneasy. Things are not what it should be. Encourage yourself through encouraging. Absolute, right. And I guess that's what I was doing. I, I guess in some regard, that's what I was doing. But literally it took the whole of 2015 to break me literally to break me into a new person um, that understands the place of discomfort in my life. So, you know, it, it the business, I wanted to give the background so you understood like how this all began and where the discomfort was. But here's how I started to really push myself. Like once I kind of freed myself from what was holding me back from fully doing things out of my comfort zone here are some things i did so speaking for instance i'm an introvert if you asked me 10 years ago if i would ever become a speaker i would have laughed at you profusely it's just not a natural thing that i would think of myself to do i was like petrified years ago to get up on a stage to even speak up in a meeting i mean i had great thoughts in a small setting, I'd certainly be able to share nuggets. But, you know, if I had to get up in front of people, that was like, what? You know, you can't possibly be um, asking me to do such a thing. So I decided to write, you understand. <laughs> so, you know, I really decided to put myself out there as a speaker um, one, because I knew I had the platform and I knew people wanted to hear more from me. And so I, I understood already that there were ways for me to get into that. And so I started putting myself in those positions. And I also started putting myself in networking situations where people would have to ask me pointed questions about what I do, how I do it, and, and what the purpose of this business is. That was another thing. And so I went to a lot of investor showcases and I spoke at a bunch of events. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. Uh, <laughs> in a quiet space. Um, and those instances, so each of those instances, I mean, made me sick to my stomach. But what happened after and the relationships and the the recognition that I had after putting myself in those positions, I was like, oh my God, okay, well, that was useful. And that was me putting myself outside of my comfort zone and that actually helped. And so while I was greatly uncomfortable in those situations, in a very weird way, I wanted more of it. I wanted more of it. And so, you know, that was that, um, you know, from a video perspective, I'll give you pre Periscope, I had started a YouTube channel, which still exists um, and is actually rocking and rolling now only because I feel comfortable enough to see myself on camera. But back when I started, I just thought, oh, great idea. 
let me, you know, start a YouTube channel that will somehow supplement my blog and did that for a while and then got very uncomfortable with that. Um, but recognize all the while that by doing that, I opened up myself to other opportunities. And so again, while it was not comfortable for me, it was another way of kind of expanding myself. Um, so, you know, basically I have put myself in situations or I've kind of met fear in its face and said, you know, <laughs> And, you know, it's helped. It's literally helped. Now, I'm not telling you to go to the furthest end of what your discomfort is, but a little bit goes a long way. I mean, I think I pushed myself harder than most people would because I did it all at once. It was like video, um, speaking engagements, you know, webinars, um, new business, drumming up new business, um, investor showcases. A little bit is hard enough. Absolutely, a little bit is just hard enough. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of an all or nothing person. That's just how I am. And so when I do it, I tend to do it to myself all at once. And so, yeah, I mean, the all of last year, I pushed, I pushed, I pushed big speaking engagements. I mean, stuff that I planned three, this was like stuff I was working on for two, three years. And, you know, some were as small as 20 bosses don't dabble. Go, well, girl, then, okay, okay. <laughs> it's, I guess that's what it is. But this, I am living proof, living proof that like perfectionists and planning and people that do that kind of thing and think that they can plan their life to the nth extent um, can can change, you know? So I, I mean, I feel like I'm fundamentally changed um, because I allowed myself to be put in a situation in a box in a in in many situations really um that weren't comfortable for me and aren't natural settings for me right as a species let's just say introverts are species um they they're just i put myself in settings that aren't comfortable for me and so you know little baby steps i mean if you even just take a step back and think about like the one thing that you want to do and what's keeping you from that and recognizing what that fear is, jump into it, jump into it. And the one thing that I've realized is the mind is a beautiful place and it's a terrible place because many times what I had conjured in my head as the worst possible outcome of what I was trying to accomplish, it was almost never quite as bad as what I conjured in my head. It was almost never just as bad. It, the mind has a way of telling you certain things about what's gonna happen. And I'm a very like, I, I will kind of try to figure out all the alternative situations that can happen. And then I start thinking, well, what if this happens? And then if that happens, then it's certainly gonna be this. And, and then this person's gonna think that and the business is gonna look this way. and. It almost never, pretty much never, is as bad as you think it's going to be. It just isn't. Um, I know I had one of the bigger speaking engagements that I've had ever last year. And I was like afraid. I had like a hundred and something HR, you know, people sitting there waiting to hear me, you know, pontificate about big data and these kinds of things and I practiced I practiced I practiced I was practicing up into the morning and literally the night before I had just flown from the west coast tired from a conference had been home to run a program and drove up to the hotel at like 11 p.m at night tired as anything 
baked a cake oh baked a cake for my aunt because it was her birthday was just crazy and i had to speak the next morning at literally nine o'clock in the morning about big data to a bunch of hr people who you know i had no way of knowing how i would be received or whatever yeah and so you know even that morning i'm in the, the mirror and like I don't feel like I look great enough and I'm like, do I look tired? Are they going to notice? And I'm going on and I'm on. And so anyway, I make it down there and I go in and I'm like waiting and people start coming in and I start speaking to people and I'm like, okay, I'm all right. And more people come in and, you know, they introduce me and I go on and I maybe want to say the first five words. I was like... Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. After that, it was fine. It was not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I mean, in the end, I actually had to say to myself like, okay, what were you really worried about? Or all of those things you conjured up were for nothing. And so I say this to say that like, had I let the fear consume me from the very beginning, I would have missed out on so many great opportunities. I mean, so many. And so like, I'm talking about so many, but even on a small scale, just that one thing that gnaws at you, that like deep in your heart, you're like, I've got to do this. Like, this is something I want to do. For God's sake, do it. Do it, fight through the fear, fight through the discomfort. Um, like I said, it's never as bad as you think it's going to be. And... In some strange way, it's like a drug. It's almost like adrenaline. Like once you start to get that rush of doing something that you feared, you kind of want more. It's almost like you want more. It's like, okay, what can I do next? You know, what situation can I, what, how, how much higher, how much further can I push myself? And so um, I'm at a point this year, finally, finally, where I feel like, I'm even, I'm even, you know, it, it, the discomfort is there, the knots are still there, but now I'm more determined to find the discomfort than for it to find me. And when it finds me first, I'm not falling apart. Like I'm not falling apart into pieces anymore. I understand its place in my life. Um, and many times, and I know this is so cliche cause like everybody posts about this, but, um, when you're in a state of discomfort constantly, and I've been this way for a few years now as I've been bu building the business, um, it usually means that good things are coming. It usually means if you believe in God or whomever, um, that something good is being moved, something's being moved away and something's about to come through. And I've felt that way. I have not been able to put my finger on it exactly what it is, but when things are moving, it's like you just feel it. It's kind of a very weird thing. And so you have to honor that. You have to honor that. Um, I've learned to go with the flow a lot more. I've learned that perfection does not exist. <laughs> it doesn't exist. I've learned that you, know, you can plan to an extent and then life is going to do what it's going to do with you anyway and um and you just have it's all in how you react to it um i get i'm a worry wart so it's not like i just got beaten up and then one day i woke up and said okay discomfort we're gonna be best friends i have to work at it and you have to work at it too and you have to find the ways that work for you to be able to deal with it one of the things i've taken up in the past year is meditation so I try, it's not every day, but I try my best to really start the day in a very centered place. And I try to go back to that place when I start feeling frenzied or when things feel crazy. Um, it's just a good way to release. I used to run years ago, and this was another fear. Um, used to run years ago, I used to do 5Ks and so I made sure last year that that was something I got back into. So self-care 
is a huge, huge piece of it. It's like you can't have the discomfort and not have the self-care because you got to remember you're pushing yourself like out of the box. And for me, I was pushing myself like way out of the box, over the hill, over the mountain, all of that. So when you do that, you've got to find ways to pour back into yourself. And so that, you know, differs for everybody. For me, it's cooking. For me, it's doing something fun like doing a wipeout race with my husband or running a color run or, you know, just meditating. Those are the things for me. But what I wanted to just leave you with and to have you understand is that there is immense opportunity above and beyond what you think you're capable of right this moment. And it all begins with facing your fears and being a little uncomfortable. It sounds strange, but it's true. The Wipeout Race. So do you know the show Wipeout? It's like, I think it started in Japan. They used to run it on like ABC, but it has like a bunch of obstacle courses and people get like knocked down and it, it's like crazy. Okay, right. So that show, um, there's a race that they incorporate those obstacles into the race. And so they call it the wipeout run. So my husband and I did it last year in Brooklyn. And um, it was a hell of something because I haven't ran. It is cool. I was beat down, but <laughs> it was cool. I, I made it to the end and I did it with my husband. Um, that was another thing. I hadn't run a 5K in over six, seven years, like not since before I had my first child. So the idea that I was going to be running a 5K was like, what have I lost my ever loving mind? But I did three last year. That was one of them. And I actually, that's one I should have feared and I didn't. I actually, um, it was a lot harder than I expected. <laughs> I'll just say that. But I made it through, and so it was It was cool. I think um, I'll go for it again because I'm a glutton for punishment. So, so yeah. So, you know, in parting, inject just a little, like this much. You see that? That's not very much. This much discomfort for 2016. And I promise you it will all work out. Like, it definitely will. I have I, I can sit here and say 100% it will work out. If it doesn't work out exactly the way you want it to, you're going to learn. So that's the other little piece before I like kind of wrap it up is failure. I've right. Revolutionaries are never comfortable. This I've come to realize. And failure is something I've never been comfortable with either. And that you have to start to get comfortable with that concept too. Like for me, it's like, what? I didn't get that right or I didn't do that or I didn't get that deal or I didn't get that speaking engagement. It's like, it's fine, but it's all fine because it's lessons and you learn from it and what's for you is for you and you'll have what's for you. Um, if you didn't get it, it's not for you. That's just it. And so I've come to that realization because I am a recovering perfectionist, people. I'm letting you know that in this head of mine, things needed to be like this all the time, all the time. And um, becoming a business owner, I've been beaten down enough now that I realize that there is no room for perfection and not being perfect is fine. It's all good. It's all good. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you were, <laughs> I am not lying, a recovering perfectionist. I wish there was like a support group for people like me, but I will treat you guys as such tonight since I don't know of any, but I am a recovering perfectionist. I'm trying every day not to think that things should move in a linear fashion. I really am, so. Thank you for what I need to look. I need about 20 steps. I'm still trying guys. <laughs> I needed 20 steps. 12 steps ain't going to help me at all. I'm the one that would have been at the end of the program. Like, please, 
No. Eight more. Eight more, please. Eight more. No, really. So. <laughs> So hopefully you were able to capture or see um, the URL to the article. Yes, 20 steps in a wipeout race, all of that. Oh, and wine, lots and lots of wine. Today is National Wine Day, I believe. So if I had a glass, I would clink clink to you. But there you go. There's a URL to the article. If you want to read it, snapshot that. Um, thank you, Kimberly Minto, for being awesome. She's like my doppelganger. Yes, clink, clink. She is my doppelganger and rocking. And if you didn't realize last week, I announced that that is my intern extraordinaire, Miss Kimberly Minto. We actually met for the first time this week, like face to face, because we've been doing virtual. So that was very cool. And things are rocking and rolling. So Thank you, Kimberly. I appreciate you. I really do. Um, what's going on in the aristocracy of HR this week? I am discussing the untouchables. I'm not going to get too deep because I'm going to do it on YouTube anyway, but the untouchables, why you shouldn't be salvaging bad employees at any level. And that's what I'm talking about on the Aristocracy of HR this week. I will have a YouTube up very shortly, um, kind of going behind the scenes about what I was thinking and where that story comes from. So check it out. And other than that, you know, you can catch these episodes for 24 hours on Periscope, but you can also catch it on my YouTube channel. And you can also catch it on catch.me forward slash Sarina of HR. So Thank you so much. And before I go, PIC, I left for a moment and then I took a breather and I reset and now I'm back. And so I'm excited to rejoin my peeps over at Performance I Create. Great, great content all the time, um, pretty much any day of the week. So hop over to performanceicreate.com and show them some love. Those is my people. And that's pretty much it. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Chimay. Thank you, Lataria. Thank you to all the others that jumped on. I think it was Don M and I can't, M-B-I-C. Not sure what your name is. Please introduce yourself one of these days because you're always on as well. Thank you so much. You guys have a great rest of the week and I will talk to you next week. Bye. Peace. Love you.